I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You are about to hear Wild and Precious Life by Patricia Cotter. The play features illustrious stage and screen actors Deborah Monk, Scott Adsit, Lisa Emery, Denise Manning, Jeff Beale, and Lucy DeVito. They're directed by Michelle O'Brien. If you enjoy today's episode, you can hear another of Patricia's short plays, Rules of Comedy, by visiting playingonair.org or by exploring our past seasons on iTunes. And now, Wild and Precious Life. We're at a memorial service, officiated by Reverend Sandy. Rex, Tina, and Kevin quietly grieve as Alice finishes a reading of a poem. Tell me what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? That was Sheila's favorite poem and favorite poet. Sheila, you lived a wild and precious life, and I don't know how we will go through the rest of our lives without you. You were one of a kind. (laughs) I can't believe that I'm using were. How is past tense possible? I hate that. I really do. I I, I just hate that. Thank you, Alice. (laughs) And and thank you, Mary Oliver. She helps in times like these. (laughs) Please, Alice, take a seat. This is hard. What you all are doing is incredibly challenging. Sheila was very loved. She is leaving an enormous hole in the universe of her friends and family. Now, before our final song, also a favorite of Sheila's, Sheila, in her true iconoclastic style, has a few more surprises in store for you. I have a note from her to you. A little something Sheila wanted me to share with those who are gathered to send her on to her next great adventure. I have it here, unopened. Oh my god. Sheila was the I can't believe she's gone. Typical Sheila. Hello. Sorry that my funeral is a bit of a bummer, but what are you going to (laughs) do? To take the sting out of my kicking the bucket, per my instructions, an envelope containing $10,000 in cash has been taped to the bottom of one of your chairs. (laughs) <laughs> Don't blame me if you pick the wrong seat. Good luck, suckas. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that's got to be a joke. Of course it is, Tina. We all know Sheila. Reverend Sandy, I don't think that's very funny. I mean, would something like that even be legal? Right. But this is, as far as I can tell, Sheila did ask for a lawyer to be present. And apparently, Mr. Greenspan, did you tape that? Yes. Oh, Attorney Greenspan is giving me a thumbs up. Okay. It's all on the up and up. The note appears to have been notarized. There actually is $10,000 in cash under one of your seats. Oh. Huh. Well, then. (laughs) Um, Everyone, I would like to remind you that you are still at a funeral, a place of worship. Sir, excuse me. There are children and elderly people present, not to mention Sheila's dead body. I got it, I got it, I found it, I found it. I got it, hey, look at that. Hey, how about that? 10,000. Wow. Good for you. Fun. (laughs) That was so much fun. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. (laughs) Congrats. Uh, I'm sorry, but what's your name? Uh, yeah, who are you, exactly? He's an interloper, that's what he is. So, now, let's all Excuse take our seats me, and Reverend continue. Sandy. It's just, I don't think any of us have ever met this particular individual before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, hi, everybody, I'm Kevin. Huh. <laughs> Kevin. Yeah, randomly, some guy named Kevin yeah. is at Sheila's funeral. Normally an intimate event, but whatever. Okay, Kevin. Attention, please. Let's focus. Well, now then, that was exciting and unusual. 
This is, believe it or not, my first funeral, so I don't know, maybe there are frequent cash giveaways? <laughs> Perhaps this would be a good time for everyone to tell us all how you knew Sheila and what she meant to you. We can pass the mic. Let's start with the, for lack of a better word, winner. Kevin? Ah, uh, uh, well, my wife Lenore sold Sheila her house on Morningside. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Anybody else want the mic? But that was years ago. So you met her like seven years ago? Uh, yeah, I actually I never met Sheila. I just came today with Lenore, but she had a showing at three in Santa Monica, so she left and I stayed. Oh yeah, right. Got it. So, uh, technically, you didn't know Sheila? Nope. No, I didn't. But, you know, it's like one of the out-of-towners always win the lottery, right? This guy wasn't even Sheila's realtor. He was just the, well, there. Realtor yeah. adjacent? Gosh, yeah. that's interesting. So, now it's Hang time... Hang on, Rev. I just have to say, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't mention that I was actually sitting in that chair before the service began. But then, Kevin, is it? Uh-huh. Kevin asked me to move, basically demanded it, so that he and his wife could sit together. And, and I did move, because I'm a nice person. And then Kevin's wife bailed because she couldn't be bothered to stay for a whole entire funeral. Rude. And then Kevin won. So I think that's <coughs> kind of... BS. Yeah. I call BS. Rex. Sorry. But it is. We're all thinking it. This is an emotional time. You're all grieving. At least, I think that's what's happening. I'm not sure. Okay, moving on. There is one more event before the- Okay, I hate to pull this card. I really do, but I slept with Sheila back in 93. We were both 80% drunk, but still we had 100% official sex, and I am fairly certain that she would want me to have that money. Really? Alice, really? She said that? Yeah, not ex ex explicitly. I mean, not during. Isn't the time nor but the I slept with Sheila twice. We should split it. What? No. Sheila and I had a three-way with Natalie Merchant's drummer after Sheila dragged me to Lilith Fair. Classic Sheila. Jesus. People, mm. enough. God, she really God, could be does amazing. anybody else you, kill Sheila? you? Hey, don't talk about Sheila you like that. You didn't even know her. So what? No one's ever given me $10,000 before, and now I'm kind of crazy about Sheila it. Sheila would not want her money going to her realtor's husband. Oh, she hated that house on Morningside. It had black mold. She told me. That mold in that house probably killed her. Yeah. Kevin killed our Sheila. Yeah. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. Come here. Give me that money. money. Give it to me. Please. Security. Do we even have that? Attorney Crane's man. Help. Sanctuary. Everyone. Sit. Kevin, please get away from me. I have lost control of you people. Sorry. This is a memorial Never. service, not a tailgate party. I've been to NASCAR rallies where the participants were better behaved. <laughs> Jesus. And I mean that. I'm not using it in vain. If Sheila had wanted anyone in this room to have her money, she would have left it to you in writing. This, for whatever reason, this fiasco was her last wish and we need to honor it. So, give the money back to the guy who came with the woman who barely knew Sheila. She would have wanted it that way. Here. Here's your money. I'm oh, sorry. I grabbed a few bucks. Here you go. Yeah. It's not cool to mess with somebody's dying wish, man. Now, there is one final part of the service that I need to share. This might be difficult, but here is Sheila and her own words. She recorded them before her death and requested that I play this video at her funeral. By the way... I never met Sheila, and I have no idea why she did this to me. So, was that fun? Did you like that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so, sorry to all the losers, but mm. life's a crapshoot, my dear friends. Plus, I bet you were less sad for a minute. Oh, I love you all, in my own way. And I regret none of it. Even Lilith. What a cluster. Oh, it's funny to think I'll never know who won the cash. Unless I end up watching this all unfold as I sit on a big, puffy cloud surrounded by St. Peter, Eleanor Roosevelt, and Jimi Hendrix as all of my childhood pets run up to greet me. But I doubt that. And that's okay. I found a lot of heaven right here on Earth. Tina, 
Alice and Rex. I'm especially talking to you guys. But to whoever won, here's a little bit of financial advice. Enjoy it. Don't pay off a bill. I mean it. This is pure joy money. Go on a meth-fused binge if need be. But if you spend it paying off a chase card, I'm going to come back and make your life hell. Swear to God, I'll haunt you. (laughs) Also, you might want to think about taking everybody here out to dinner. A nice one with really good, not just okay, champagne. And yes, I'm talking to you, Rex. (laughs) Well, then, goodbye, dear friends. A one, two, three. Is that a band? Where did Sheila get a band? What are we going to do without her? <sighs> Might I suggest that we retire to the atrium to scatter Sheila's ashes over the rose garden? Which, I might add, is completely illegal. But it's her wish, and... Oh, yeah, I don't know. Most laws are dumb. Follow me. Sorry, Kevin. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know what quite happened. It's okay. Grief is weird. Sheila. (laughs) Uh, We actually almost kind of met once. You probably don't remember. I drove Lenore to sign some papers for the closing. I was just sitting in the car, but then I got bored. So I got out and started wandering around, and I walked to the side yard, and I could see you through the window, talking to my wife and signing stuff, all those boring papers. And you looked... Maybe it was... Just the sun coming in behind you. Was It was close to five? Not sure. I, I just remember all that perfect light. But I swear to God, I remember thinking, I kind of love her. She's something. Something else. Different. I bet she doesn't talk about Zillow when we're falling asleep. And I don't mean to knock my wife. I love her. I do. But I think maybe you were a very different kind of alive. The unexpected kind. No wonder half the pallbearers slept with you. I I think I didn't know that to be with a person like you was an option. You existed. You were out there. An unusual person, a unicorn person. So, and plus, you still died. Even you, magical person. Magical people die too. Sometimes even magical people die first. That's whatever that is. I hope you are messing with people in another realm. I do. (laughs) Thanks for the cash. I'm going to pay off a chase card. And I hope you haunt me. You get what you give, you learn as you live, and leave nothing but love, love behind. You've just heard Wild and Precious Life by Patricia Cotter. Directed by Michelle O'Brien. 
It stars Lucy DeVito as Reverend Sandy, Lisa Emery as Alice, Denise Manning as Tina, Jeff Beal as Rex, Scott Adsit as Kevin, and Deborah Monk as the beloved departed Sheila. The original song, Next Time Around, is by Meisner and Smith. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm going to start by asking everybody to go around the table and say your name and your role so listeners don't get too confused. Hi, I'm Denise Manning, and I played Tina. Lisa Emery, and I played Alice. Lucy DeVito, I was Reverend Sandy. Scott Adsit, I was Kevin. Deborah Monk, Sheila. And Jeff Beale, and I was Rex. Patricia Cotter, and I'm the playwright. Michelle O'Brien, and I directed. This is a pretty rare phenomenon in a creative team of eight. You are all playing on air veterans. What is creating audio theater becoming for you? Do you like it? I love it. Yeah. What do you like about it? I like that you don't rehearse too much. Yeah. And if you have to cry, you can make it sound like you're crying and you're not really. Like I just did. (laughs) I think it's amazing that we're opening up to a new audience that maybe can't experience theater in the same way or plays. So, yeah. Patricia Cotter, playwright. How do you find that balance of comedy and tragedy as a writer? And how did you come up with this particular idea? Um, Well, I belonged to a theater company called Playground, and we had a prompt that included a song by Meisner and Smith, who's this really wonderful duo based out of San Francisco. So I listened to other music, and I heard this song, and I had just had a conversation with my dear friend Sheila Travis, and just sort of talking about what her funeral would be like. And she said, I'm going to tape $10,000 under my chair, and Sheila Travis would do it. And then I just thought, what would happen if she did? Or someone did. This is definitely not Sheila. (laughs) <laughs> it's another <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> Have any of you ever attended a particularly unusual funeral? Oh, yeah. I've attended <laughs> some really, really interesting funerals. There was one where somebody recorded themselves playing tennis, and they just had a voiceover about how much they loved it, but it was like to a backing track. <laughs> so that was interesting. <laughs> I had That's a friend it. who uh, requested that someone come and play the musical Saw <laughs> at the end of the ceremony, and the song was I Got a Lot of Living to Do. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend whose father wanted to be buried. He was an Aggie, and he wanted to be buried with his thumb sticking up in the coffin that was Aggie colors while somebody sang the Aggie song, and his thumbs were already gone because of the, you know, so they had to break them up so he could stand up. <laughs> oh, man. oh, my God. Giga Maggies, they say. And that takes the cake. Yeah, about that. <laughs> Patricia's play begins with a snippet from The Summer Day, Sheila's favorite by the poet Mary Oliver. So without getting too bizarre, can any of you think of poems or songs that you feel capture your essence? that you would want to represent you? I would never presume to know myself that well. (laughs) Thanks, Scott. (laughs) 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 Like, if we had to plan our funeral now, what song would we want to? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Wow. Yeah, I have a friend who, for as long as I've known him, and I've known him since I was 13, and that Leon Russell song came out with, um, You Got a Friend? Oh, yeah. Is that it? James Taylor. Yeah, he wanted that to be played. I'd like Beyonce's homecoming album to start <laughs> as my, <laughs> just just from start to finish, unedited, okay? And I want everyone to wear yellow. I plan my funeral, not my wedding, so that tells you what kind of person I am. <laughs> just my funeral. Yeah. Can, you, can you make a list and put us on the list to be able to come <laughs> to yeah. You guys are there. Yeah. Like yeah, you could become a funeral planner. Honestly. When will this be? I'm writing it down. <laughs> Didn't Nora Ephron do something like that? She had a list of, like, I want Tom Hanks to speak at my funeral. I want Meryl Streep to speak at my funeral. Like, mm-hmm. she had a whole yeah. thing. I think that's, that's right. Iconic. That's just great. Scott and Patricia, you have an improv background. How much improv was involved today? Well, there wasn't a lot of improv. I mean, the yeah. script is so good and, and balanced and well-written that it didn't need a lot of tweaking. I think there was maybe stuff that was altered a little bit just to make it come out of our mouths a little smoother. I loved every once in a while I'd hear something that someone just said, and my favorite one, I don't know who said it, was, come on. (laughs) I don't know why, that just made me laugh. Do you think Sheila is a dying breed in any way? I think so. I think that 
I wanted it to be a person that doesn't care about what other people think and even in the planning of their funeral wanted to have fun and know that for a second everybody would forget that they were grieving. I think she's she's just being honest and going out the way she lived her life. At the end of the play, Kevin says that he felt Sheila was a a unicorn person and a very different kind of alive than he was. Scott, you played Kevin. Does that line resonate for you? Yeah, I think so. I'm always kind of criticizing myself for not living exuberantly enough. Hmm. And I think Sheila's a good example of how uh, how one could live and maybe in my case should live a little more. Yeah. I think anybody in their right mind would so admire somebody who lived that way and was so free and fun-loving and... I mean, it's just to be planning your funeral and probably be cackling over Mm. it, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What a great person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She got the last laugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Are there any unicorn-type people in your life that you admire? I think I've been lucky and I'm drawn to magical people because I think I (laughs) am not a magical person in that way. And a friend was talking about her mother-in-law who died. It was really old. And she said, yeah, she did everything she wanted to do in life. And I thought, wow, I need to step on it. Like, that (laughs) is a goal. You know, it's funny. I think because I work in the theater so often, I feel like I'm so often surrounded by magical people that I maybe take it for granted and don't notice it as much. So maybe I should spend some time with some regular people. (laughs) No. No. I mean, speaking of theater folks, which we all are, I mean, going to any of those memorials over the years, Mm -hmm. they're always magical Mm -hmm. and they're always full of laughter. That's what's one of the wonderful things about theater people, I think. They can Mm -hmm. laugh at everything and find it. It's always really moving and you learn something about them, but there are usually always something magical about all those wonderful people who have passed. That's true. Yeah. No, I I feel the same exact way. Yeah, we're surrounded by artists and creative thinkers and, you know, opening up these little nooks and crannies of our imagination. I think, yeah, as Jeff was saying, I'm, like, very lucky to be surrounded by a lot of those unicorns. It's a really great club. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been a great privilege to have you all here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. You've been listening to Playing On Air, Great American Short Plays with Great American Actors. Associate Producer, Michelle O'Brien. Literary Manager, Bonnie Antosh. Literary Assistant, Aditya Pratama. Marketing and Communications Manager, Shelley Horwitz. Theme and Play Music, Tom Cochran. Recording and Sound Design, John Kilgore. Audio Editing, Julia Melfi. Playing on Air is distributed by PRX, Public Radio Exchange. For Playing on Air, I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening.